Good morning, Grace Community Church. Uh, Pastor Dwayne here. Uh, it's Wednesday morning, a uh, beautiful morning. Just finished my morning walk and just wanted to uh, say hello and see how you're doing. Um, last night we had, uh, I had two Zoom meetings yesterday, one with the staff and one with the uh, foundations team, the FT. And I just wanted to report to all of you that uh, uh, your people, your leaders are working really hard on your behalf and uh, really proud of uh, the way that uh, they're leading and wanting to uh, just uh, make this time, very challenging time for all of us, as, as uh, easy as possible. So uh, your people are hard at work. You can be uh, proud of that. Be, keep them in your prayers too, as well as me, uh, that we all stay encouraged and blessed and uh, moving forward uh, with the ministry. Um, so last week I got a uh, email uh, and the email basically asked this question, um, how can I know the will of God for my life? Now I get these over the years as a pastor, I get these kind of questions, you know, what's the meaning of life? How do I know God's will for my life? I mean, nobody ever asked me, you know, where can I find a good hamburger or, you know, uh, where's a good place to go uh, play golf, you know, but uh, I get these hard questions. but. It really caused me to think uh, about a really profound time in my own life um, when that question was uh, really a part of uh, my thinking and who I was. I was a senior in college at San Diego State University, go Aztecs, you see my t-shirt, and um, I was also the unpaid uh, youth director of our church. And every Saturday night I took our teenagers to a Youth for Christ rally. And it was a wonderful opportunity just to have the teenagers hear the good news and be together with uh, teenagers from all over San Diego. So this one particular uh, night, uh, the pastor, I forget who it was, was preaching, and he was preaching on God's will. And I had had this um, niggling in my soul, this, this, I think it was a still, quiet voice in my head that was the, was the Holy Spirit that kept kind of saying, Dwayne, take a look at full-time ministry. Now, I didn't, I had no pastors in my family or my relatives, so that wasn't something I grew up with, but uh, there was just something inside of me that said I needed to somehow investigate this. Now, this came on the heels of the last year of my uh, training as a mechanical design engineer. I already had a good job uh, at Chemtronics, and it just didn't seem like a logical thing to do. But that night at the Youth for Christ rally, uh, the guy spoke on what does it mean to know God's will. And here's his premise, was this. Um, God's will is um, three things in the New Testament. Three times do you hear the phrase, the will of God or God's will for us. Uh, one is, I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In other words, it's God's will that every human being has an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Jesus died for all people. He loves all people, and he wants all people to come to know him. So it is God's will that you are a Jesus follower, that you are saved. The second thing is uh, that it's God's will that we are spirit-filled. Uh, that's found in 1 Peter. And um, this idea that when we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit fills us. We know that from Pentecost and throughout Scripture, that the Holy Spirit is in us. But daily we are to welcome that spirit within us to just fill us and overwhelm us and uh, become part of us. So it's God's will that you are filled with the spirit. And the third thing that the New Testament says is it's God's will that you live a pure life. In other words, um, it's God's will that you are saved, it's God's will that you are spirit filled, and it's God's will that you are sanctified. So with that teaching in me, he used an illustration to close uh, his message, and it was this. You don't know what your God's will is. You don't know which way to go, which way to turn. Um, and he says, let me use, give this illustration. So let's say you're sitting in a, in a truck. And in his case, this was in 1970. So he said, let's say you're sitting in a big old Mack truck. And uh, the engine's not on. But you get in the driver's seat and you um, push, push in the clutch. And you put the uh, gear lever in first gear. And then... Um, you start to steer. What happens? Absolutely nothing, because that truck is not moving. But if you are to turn on the engine, 
put in the clutch, put it in first gear, slowly let out the clutch, give a little bit of gas. That big old truck starts to move forward, move, 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 and pretty soon you're perking along the road at a good pace. His point was this. Too many people say, well, I'm going to sit around until God reveals to me his will for my life. No, he said. Do something. Move. Go somewhere. Be something. And once you're moving, guess what happens then? Once you're moving in that Mack truck, you can steer it to the right or to the left. And once you are moving, God can steer you to the right or to the left. So don't sit around and wait for God's will. Just move. And so the next Monday, I went to see my boss where I was working, and I asked him for a leave of absence. I, he wasn't a Christ follower. He didn't fully understand, but I said, I just need to pursue whether or not God wants me to be in ministry. And uh, I was making a move, even though it didn't make any sense, didn't make any sense to my father-in-law that he thought his daughter was going to marry an engineer and he ended up marrying a youth pastor, but she, and it, she ended up marrying a youth pastor. But he said, sure, you can have a year's leave of absence, no pay. If at the end of the year you want to come back, you can come back at your salary and that's all good. So uh, I pursued ministry, a youth pastor, for a year. God confirmed uh, without question that his path that was best for me was to follow ministry and ultimately go to seminary and to become a pastor. But I never would have experienced that if I hadn't have moved, done something. So here's my word for you today. God's word for each of us is that he wants us to pursue his will for our life. But sometimes that means we need to move, to make a move. Use your brain. Use your faith, do something, and then let God steer you from there. Because it is God's will that you are saved, it is God's will that you are spirit-filled, and it's God's will that you are sanctified. So that's uh, my word for today. I hope that you have a beautiful uh, day today, and I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.